All right, how's it going, y'all? So 24 terabyte NAS drives are finally here. And they're not just here, they're also cost effective and relatively in line with cost per terabyte of 16 terabyte drives. Today, we're going to be installing five of these into this DS1522 Plus, and it is going to give us a 100 terabyte usable space volume with RAID 5. To me, what's really impressive about these drives is not merely the fact that they exist. Obviously, engineers and labs can build pretty much anything, but what impresses me by far the most is how cost effective they are. Previously, when you were buying the largest drive capacities out there, you were paying a significant premium. When 18 TB drives came out, you were paying an extra like $100 a lot of time per drive compared to a 16 TB drive. And it's just not worth it at those capacities. But with 24 terabyte drives, these are in line with cost per terabyte of 16 terabyte versions. And so it is hard not to be really impressed by that because now it's genuinely just buy the big drives and you're not paying that much extra money for them. And it can also do something really nice in the fact that it will let you maybe buy three hard drives today and get the space you need while leaving two of the bays empty meaning that if you need more space down the line, you can buy them without having to completely buy a new NAS. So when you're first purchasing a NAS, instead of filling all of the bays with maybe like 12 or 16 terabyte drives to get the space you need, what you could do instead is buy these much larger capacity drives and leave a few bays empty. The really nice thing about using RAID 5 and RAID 6 is, it is very easy to add space later on by just inserting another drive. You don't leave any performance on the table at all because by the time you add the next drive, it fully rebalances just like you had that RAID and that drive the entire time. So it can be really effective to save you a lot of money in the short term and the long term. Because what you can do is you can use fewer drives to start to get the space you need. Then when it comes time to upgrade, you don't have to replace the entire unit and all the drives. Instead, you can just buy a couple more drives. It is a really cost-effective thing to do, and it also just makes your IT life way easier because you're not having to completely reconfigure your unit. Instead, you just slot in a couple extra drives. So there are a ton of advantages to these, and I'm gonna go ahead and be installing them in this DS1522+. Plus. I bought all these units with my own money. I tried reaching out to companies and nobody would send me these drives for free. So I bought them myself and eventually they're gonna be going in my client backup server. But today we're going to be running them in this DS1522 plus and building our 96 terabyte volume. We're gonna be looking at today, not only what it's like installing them on there, what kind of performance we can get, but also should you be buying them? Is it worth it? Is it cost effective? Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, perfect. So I've just installed all five of those drives into this DS1522 Plus, and they're rated for 280 megabytes of transfer speed per second. So we'll definitely check that out. I will have to get more updated numbers after I let this thing run for a while due to the fact that the RAID sync, but I actually expect us to be able to come pretty close to saturating a 10 gigabit connection, probably in the eight to 900 realm, due to the fact that we've got so many drives in here these 24 terabyte drives don't have a massive performance difference over their 16 terabyte counterparts. At least on the spec sheet, it's 285 megabytes per second versus 270 megabytes per second for the 16 terabyte counterparts. So you're not gonna get a massive performance difference between the two of them, but we also do wanna listen and see how much noise this produces. And we are still gonna get pretty decent performance out of it just by the fact that there is a ton of spinning drives in here. Five drives in a RAID 5 array gives about four drives of read-write. And so that is pretty fast as long as you're using sequential workflows and you're not maxing out your storage space. So you're not at like 80% capacity plus, you should still get some pretty good performance out of a unit like this. I'm just gonna go ahead and boot it on up and grab my laptop and we'll let this thing go ahead and install. Okay, so with that beep, we can go ahead and start installing DSM on this thing, and then we'll check out the stat sheet. Okay, so while this installs, we wanna check out a few things. One, while we're installing this, we should be doing a lot of random writes. 
And that is one of those things that should make these drives as loud as they're going to be. So while I'm doing this, I'm listening and I'm going to try to compare them to a more baseline 16 terabyte Ironwolf Pro. I can't really judge every single hard drive against each other, but that is a good place to start. Especially with desktop Synologies, the sound of the actual mechanical hard drives tend to be by far the loudest part of the units themselves. And so it is by far the most important depending on where you're putting them. And we don't really care about how loud the hard drives are in a decibel perspective. That's because hard drives are not that loud, especially once you average it out and you're actually just looking at overall decibels. Hard drives have a very annoying click, click, click to them. And that tends to be the thing that is most annoying for actually having it in like a living room or having it in an office with employees working around it. And so I'm listening and I'm going to try to compare it and see how annoying it would be working with this thing on my desk and kind of compare it to smaller drives. So far, it has not been that bad. And installing the operating system of DSM on this thing is a ton of random writes. So this should be when the drives are the loudest. And so far, it's really not been bad. Would I want it right next to me 24 seven just like this? Probably not. But I don't know of any mechanical hard drives that I would want right next to me like this anyway. Overall, at least from my testing, they do not appear to be any louder than any other mechanical hard drives that I tested, at least not ones that are over four terabytes in capacity. The tiny hard drives can be fairly quiet, but for anything that's got these larger capacities, these are pretty much in line. So while it's doing the final installation, we can pull up the stat sheet and there's not too much going on here. This column is going to be those 16 terabyte drives and these are going to be the 24 terabyte drives. Really, I'm focusing on comparing to the 16 terabyte drives because those were the other unit that I was recommending most people because their cost effectiveness, especially in previous years. But if you look, we do not have a massive difference in power draw except when idling between the 16s and the 24 terabyte drives, but access is pretty much the same. So with five drives, we're talking about five watts of extra power. Nothing you're really going to notice too much, but these still don't draw very much power at all. This entire package right now is drawing about 50 watts. I just measured it. And so that is very little. You can't get much of a desktop computer or a monitor that draws that, that little power. So it should not have a massive effect on your power bill, especially when you consider that while it is drawing more power, power per terabyte is significantly less. So you still are saving money given how many drives you've got to reach the same amount of storage capacity, which is great. The drives have also idled down now and they're pretty much dead silent unless you get up right to it and listen for a very quiet whir, which is not a big deal. All right, so DSM has been ready to be installed and we can go ahead and install our volume. And now we start hearing some of those random reads which are going to be your biggest nuisance. I'm going to be setting this up in RAID 5 due to the fact that SHR does not give me any advantages here because I don't think I'm going to be switching this thing out for 30 terabyte drives anytime soon. These units are in tibibytes, so we should be getting 96 terabytes of usable space on this thing, which is pretty impressive, especially when you think about the fact that these five drives could also be plugged into an expansion unit. So this unit can get two of them. DS1821 Plus can get two of them. So that basically gives you a 100 terabyte expansion unit without having to buy a new NAS or reconfigure anything. So it's really nice to have that flexibility, especially when you've got limited numbers of drives, which if you've watched this channel in the past, you know I've kind of complained about the five bay expansion units as not being enough. But now with these massive drives, it might be. We will see that these are not on the Synology compatibility list, but this unit's the DS1522 Plus. And if you've watched my video on Synology required drives, you know that this unit will just do a complain once and never again. So we're just gonna hit continue and max out our volume. We're gonna use BTRFS on it, not encrypt it. And now it's gonna go ahead and build the volume. Okay, so right now, the volume and storage pool have been built, but this optimizing background is what's called a RAID sync. And it's actually very, very, very quiet because this is what's called a sequential read in most cases. It's just reading all the data and making sure it understands everything. And it's not doing a ton of writes in general. So it is flying through these pretty fast if I had to bet. So yeah, 
each of these disks is reading at 212 megabytes per second, which does give us a lot of performance to play with. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this thing over to a 10 gigabit connection and see what kind of performance we can get out of it. I will be doing this test later on as well, mostly due to the fact that this optimization can take up a little bit of the performance to begin with, though Synology is pretty good about kind of letting it run in the background when we're not doing things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and find that NAS again and sign back in, and we'll go ahead and build a shared folder and just see what kind of performance we can get out of it with a sequential read from the NAS. Okay, so I'm back in. I'm just gonna go ahead and build a basic shared folder on it. And go ahead and optimize my SMB settings to make sure we get the fastest speeds out of this. Okay, so flashing forward really quick. What I've done is I've pulled over this 110 gigabyte file on the NAS. So that is that tester folder. And we can see right here that we have that massive capacity. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna copy it over a 10 gigabit connection directly into my computer. So the number I want you to look at when we're seeing how fast we're going with this is this data received per second. And this is gonna tell us how fast we can go. The maximum realistic speed I ever get with Mac OS is about 1.15 gigabytes a second of data over a 10 gigabit connection. If you don't know, networking standards are measured in bits per second, but when we actually wanna know how fast data is transferring for file copies, we measured it in bytes per second. So that's why there is a difference. In general, you just divide by 10 or divide by eight, but there is a little bit of overhead, so 10 is a safe assessment. But in my experience, getting over one gigabyte per second is very impressive. So what we're gonna do is a textbook sequential copy of this 110 gig file to this, and we're just gonna look at this. I've also chosen a massive file that is clearly gonna be outside of the RAM size of this. And if you look at that, it is really sticky right at 1.1 gigabytes per second. That is very, very, very impressive. If we look at our disk utilization, we are flying through this thing. And so we are getting some great speeds out of it. And this is really sustained performance here. That dip was just from me changing windows and Mac OS priorities changing. Nothing to do with the NAS itself as far as I can tell. But yeah you're going to be able to get 10 gigabit performance out of this unit, which is pretty darn impressive, especially given its form factor. Okay, so now with all this information, are 24 terabyte IronWolf Pros a buy? Or are 24 terabyte drives a buy in general? And I've gotta say yes in a lot of cases. Obviously, if you need five terabytes of space, no, you don't need to go that big. But for people who are really looking at massive 50 plus terabyte volumes, Starting with 24 terabyte drives, I think is a great idea. They do cost you more money in the short term, especially if you're buying three drives and doing RAID 5 versus five drives in RAID 5. You do lose more space due to parity as a percentage. So upfront costs will be a little bit higher, even if your cost per terabyte for the drives is the same. But that also gives you massive amounts of flexibility in the future. So I've got to say, after looking at this, I would absolutely recommend these. If you're somebody who knows that they're going to need a lot of space in the future, starting with these 24 terabyte drives just allows you to expand so much further. 24 terabyte drive has 50% more capacity than a 16 terabyte drive. And in general, they cost about 50% more. So your cost per terabyte is gonna be about the same. And they really just allow you to get so much more space into a smaller NAS. I gotta say, I'm really impressed by the fact that this small desktop unit that is just a little five bay, has 100 terabytes of usable space in it right now, which I gotta say is hard to beat. So if you're somebody who's looking for that extra space, I think I'm gonna start recommending 24 terabyte drives because they really can store that massive amount of capacity while still being very robust. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. If you wanna hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And if you've got any questions, put those down in the comments below. And have a good one, bye.